Parkinson's uh, disease, or rather people with Parkinson's pose, or ha leads to a major societal burden. And that's related to the, both a mixture of their motor problems and the non-motor problems. And in addition, uh, the, eff the effect the condition has on caregivers. So you have a direct cost of the condition that is associated with the reduced mobility, reduced productivity, uh, and uh, costs related to non-motor problems such as depression, uh, sometimes dementia, sleep problems, pain, and also issues related to falls. In addition, we also have a major societal burden in the form of carer uh, time. Often carers give up their work to care, care for the patients, sometimes lifelong. And in addition, there is also caregiver stress-related societal burden. So it's a, very, it's a mixture of direct and indirect burden, uh, but taken together, they're, they're, quite, they're substantial. Parkinson's, uh, our understanding of Parkinson's has increased enormously in the last 10 years, of 15 years or so. And for instance, although previously we used to think that conditions such as, or symptoms such as tremor, or resting tremor in particular, or reduced uh, mobility or rigidity of the arms, for instance, might be the early presenting symptoms. Now we know that that is not true Often, for instance, the earliest symptom might be some subtle non-motor features like reduced sense of smell or not being able to discriminate smell properly or a sleep disorder we call REM behavior disorder where people act out violent dreams and often the bed partner uh, would suffer because the person uh, is often lashing out at night and perhaps hitting the partner and so on. But along with that, we also know there is other medley of non-motor problems such as constipation, depression and anxiety, uh, daytime sleepiness, uh, unilateral pain could all be early features. In addition to the fact that in some people, mild tremor, difficulty writing or uh, the, the, the writing getting smaller or dragging a foot perhaps or dragging an arm and sometimes pain in the shoulder for instance, could be the earliest feature of this condition. So early detection of Parkinson's is very, very important simply because in future neuroprotective treatments might become available and that earlier we treat the better it is. But to detect early one needs to increasingly have a paradigm which would combine uh, motor features with perhaps some non-motor features. So for instance, if somebody presents with unilateral rigidity or reduced uh, arm swing or difficulty in writing with the writing becoming smaller um, or perhaps unilateral pain with reduced mobility or uh, uh, manual dexterity of that arm along with reduced sense of smell or even sleep dysfunction such as RBD or quite severe depressive episodes the index of suspicion should go up. And I think we need greater awareness of these early and sometimes prodromal features amongst our neurologists, amongst our geriatricians, amongst the nurse specialists and other allied health specialists because Parkinson's can present to many, many different specialities.